Hi everyone, in this video I will be sharing my self-taught journey from zero coding experience to landing my first front-end engineer job in around 9 months. It was completely free, self-directed learning. If that sounds like something you are interested in, get comfortable because I will be talking a lot today. I will walk you through the technologies I learned, how long each one took me and what I would do differently if I were studying today. I will also share some of my biggest mistakes where I wasted a lot of time, I hope it helps someone. And of course, I'll be sharing some tips and resources for everyone who wants to break into tech. Let's dive in. I have two master's degrees in architecture and a couple of years of experience as an architect. After my last project where I was leading architect and supervised a big construction site, I got a terrible burnout. I quit the job and for a couple of months I had no idea what I want to do with my life. I took a break and went to my parents' house, procrastinated a little bit. I was thinking what else I could do. Back in school my cousin tried to teach me web development and I did some simple layout with uh, um, HTML and CSS but back then I didn't understand what I was gonna do with all this like what my work would look like and on the other side I had a whole family of architects so the other path was closer to me but I actually admired the lifestyle and opportunities that my cousin built for himself he lived in Germany traveled a lot he could work from any part of the world he could work from home that's what i couldn't do as an architect so i thought maybe that's something i could try and that's the time when a new chapter started in my life I just started consuming all YouTube and all the free information I could find about how to learn programming. I was figuring out what fields in tech I like more. I mean, front-end, back-end, mobile development. And as expected, front-end was the easiest and the most appealing to me as I am a very visual person with my architectural past. After some time, I had a little bit of understanding what I want to do in tech. And the only question was, how do I learn it? There are always three options for how you can learn programming conventional college university boot camps and the third path is self-study with some courses after talking to other programmers i learned that computer science is a field that you can actually self-study and many universities often teach outdated materials unless you get to the top one so it might not be worth time and money and honestly, after six years of studying architecture, I couldn't afford another four years of study. I love learning and I would gladly pursue another degree, but I just couldn't afford it. The next option was a boot camp, and I really wanted to join one, but again, I just simply didn't have money. I was in a super saving mode and I literally had enough money for the next couple of months to pay for rent and eat cheaply at home. So expensive boot camps just weren't an option for me either. But I thought like, listen, if that's something that I really want to do, I'll try a self-study path because quite frankly, I just didn't have any other options. So let's quickly go through what I learned step by step. I started with basic HTML and CSS by following YouTube tutorials. I just copied everything they did locally. At the beginning, I found it easier to understand concepts when someone explained them through real examples. And I completed a couple of responsive websites before moving on to JavaScript. But looking back, I'm not sure if you need to build as many projects as I did. It might be a waste of time. You are good enough if you build just one solid layout and the rest you will pick up on other projects. A great project to start with is your own portfolio website. Here is a practical video of how to build a responsive portfolio website step by step using HTML and CSS. Just follow along and create your own portfolio. I'll add the link in the description. Let's move to the next step. A few weeks later, I moved on to JavaScript and that part wasn't easy for me at the beginning. It took me months to grasp what I was doing. I took a course JavaScript algorithm and data structures on the alma mater for all three courses for beginners. It's a free code camp. And I also took some project-based JavaScript courses on Udemy. This course helped me to understand the fundamentals of JavaScript, including variables, loops, functions, objects, and arrays. And this course introduces you to algorithms and data structures. It's great for building a solid foundation. After learning JavaScript and object-oriented programming, I moved on to React, and it took me another couple of months before it finally clicked. I remember reading documentation over and over and still not getting it. It was so tough. 
if you are learning programming now and feel the same way like you don't understand anything i feel you i've been there keep going keep learning and eventually it will click web development is a field where things change very quickly and react has changed drastically since then what i learned back then may not be as relevant now so i won't even mention resources which i used because they are simply irrelevant now but if i had to start everything from scratch i would go with educative it's a fantastic platform for learning programming and it's very popular you've probably heard of it the React course is impressive. It covers everything from the basics to advanced topics. If you are still unsure where to start or which programming language to learn, they offer courses on everything from the web development to system design. Plus, there are interview prep courses and an AI mock interviewer. Everything you need to land your first job, all in one place. I've got a link in the description for 10% off their courses, so feel free to check it out. Let's move further. My first job. After about eight nine months of learning front-end stack and building a few projects i started applying for jobs at the same time i was preparing for technical interviews i remember sending about 10 resumes and naively waiting for replies for a couple of weeks and nothing came i was so disappointed don't make these mistakes just submitting your resume is not enough especially here in north america the most effective approach here is to grow your network and seek for referrals tailoring your resume for each job posting and include personalized cover letter that's what truly makes difference here um, let's go back to my job search the interview went great but i was absolutely terrified beforehand i was literally shaking and convinced that i was gonna fail <laughs> I felt like I didn't know anything and what I'm doing here. It was on-site interview and on top of the technical challenges, I was anxious about my English. It was a lot of stress for me. They asked me some technical questions and we went through my GitHub project together. And a week later, I started working for this company based in Paris. We built lots of projects for clients across Europe, mainly in France. I was still pretty much newbie when I joined, but within three years, I grew into a self-managed engineer. Beside the front end, I got a little bit of experience working with back end and building the mobile applications on React Native. And eventually my responsibilities expanded to managing front end for certain projects and working directly with clients. Then came 2022 and 2023, which were incredibly tough years for me personally. My seven-year relationship ended, the war in my country began. I left my home and moved to Canada, which I didn't plan and wasn't prepared for. It felt like everything around me was falling apart. It truly really slowed me down for a long time. But what I want to say is that I'm so thankful I had this job. I've heard so many heartbreaking stories of people who had to leave their homes unexpectedly and they lost their jobs, they lost their homes, they lost everything that they had. Having remote work and some income makes such a huge difference. Just the opportunity to work remotely from any part of the world is a huge privilege that many people don't have. So when I came to Canada, I was still working for the Paris-based company. And after being here for a year, I finally began looking for a local job. But unfortunately, I couldn't have picked a worse time. In 2023, companies were laying off employees and hiring had stopped. My resume wasn't appealing without North American experience and my work permit was expiring soon. But it's a whole other story. Let me know in comments if you are interested to hear more about hiring process and tech market in Canada. Now I'm happy to say that last summer I joined a local startup here in Toronto and I'm also running social media and that's been my journey so far. I'm so happy I've built these opportunities for myself. I'm happy that I live here with this dreamy views. I travel, continue building my career and find joy in this life. I'm still learning every day and expanding my knowledge. Programming is a field where learning never stops. If you are someone who wants to become an engineer, you've got to be ready for that. Hi.
Here are five essential tips I want to share if you are at the same stage as I was four years ago and want to break into tech. Tip number one, define your path in tech and stick to the plan. First, you have to decide what you want to do. Web development, mobile development, data science, game dev, or something else. Choose what you want to do. Set clear and achievable goals and stick to the plan. Tip number two, networking. It's a key here in Canada and US. Attend tech meetups, build relationships with HRs, recruiters, other programmers, seek mentorship opportunities, contribute to open source that would be great tip number three build real projects create a project that you can show and talk about on interviews you can try to solve a problem that you have with building an application or a website or help a family member or local business just find the opportunity to showcase your technical skills tip number four practice with mock interviews do as many mock interviews as possible there are so many ai tools now i wish i had them too practice coding and system design interviews with an AI mock interviewer. I'll add the link in description and improve your technical English. Tip number five, leverage AI. Use AI efficiently. For example, you could assign AI a teacher role for yourself. And instead of asking direct questions, let AI guide you by providing context and helping you to solve problems step by step such a game changer. I also want to share mistakes I made. I hope you can avoid them. And the first mistake is neglecting algorithmic problem solving. I didn't solve lead code problems until I got to Canada. And honestly, I haven't solved that many yet. But here it's a must have. They ask it very often on interviews, so you have to be prepared. Platforms are in the description. Lead code, hockey rank are the most popular. My second mistake is a language barrier. This one is more for immigrants. In the beginning, I was learning a lot from translated resources, but not from the original in English. And that's a huge mistake. You are slowing down your career growth significantly. My third mistake is overthinking. I didn't do mock interviews because I was scared. I was too shy to speak publicly, especially in English. Absolutely terrified of interviews. I feared that people would see that I'm making mistakes. They probably think I'm stupid because I can solve the problem or find a bug. Well, I still have this fear, but it's definitely less than it was, let's say, a year ago. As everyone says, the best way to overcome it is to dive in and do interviews. Fail again and again and start mock interviews as soon as possible. If you made this far, you're the real one. Your background doesn't define your potential. Whether you are an architect or barista or working in an entirely different firm. A few moments later. Your hard work is your greatest strength. If you are sitting there and thinking, oh, I could never do this, I was exactly where you are. An architect with zero coding experience, terrified of unknown, and drawing in self-doubt. That was me. The good news is that the tech world is not about your degree. It's important, but it's not required. If you can build, if you know how to solve problems, if you have ability to learn and adapt, you will be fine. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out our future videos about my tech career and our life in Toronto.